if everything was going right at first, we are starting to really taste the benefits of the good decisions we made at the beginning. So looking under here, I made some pretty decent choices about the color and value of that area. Now I'm able to push and infuse a little bit more color into it without kind of interrupting the value too much. That has got to be considered an asset, really. So when you're painting against the value of an area, which is to say like, Let's say you have a really light value painted in here. You try to push the color a little bit further. You're working against the value in that area and that's going to be it's going to be an, kind of an extra challenge that maybe maybe you don't want probably. Um, and so with that in mind, it's worth bringing up that dynamic where we can look at how past decisions are affecting our painting in the moment. It's like to be a good painter you have to also like kind of predict the future a little bit. You're going to have to know where, where you're going to go as well as where you are. If you're able to do that then you can usually like make your life just a lot easier. I think that's mostly the, the dynamic that occurs, right? Is that if we make the right choices at first based upon where we want to be, you know, we can get kind of halfway, halfway there or easy, easily, you know, influence or affect our performance in that, that latter phase of the painting. But it's a predictive thing. It's, it's definitely, something that you have to look into the future, I think, to, to understand. And of course, by the way, I'm letting myself speak a little bit metaphorically here. Obviously not looking into the future, but what you're doing is you're acting on where you will be, not necessarily just where you are. And I think that's something that for students, it's really useful to try and kind of focus on and pick up that idea of, of painting for where you're going to be, not necessarily just where you are. Because, like, uh, I, I had this problem actually with, uh, with underpaintings. I loved underpaintings when I was a student, and I would focus a lot of time and effort on making a really great underpainting. The difficulty was, though, that I would make the underpainting so good, in my eyes, that I would try to like save it or hold on to it. And eventually that was to the detriment of the progress of the painting. So I never got to like really finish paintings. Or I mean, eventually you do, but the process of getting to the final stage was really stilted and really more difficult than it should be because I was so focused on like holding on to or like preserving all of the great, <laughs> the seemingly great stuff I had done in the early stages. At this moment of the painting, I have a couple concerns that I want to address. First of all, in my estimation currently, I feel like the lightest lights are actually not quite light enough in relationship to our source image. Now, eventually that is simply going to mean that I need to key both of these areas up in relationship to the values around them. So making sure that I take enough of my flake white and really overpower the color 
in these mixtures. You have to remember that every time you add a colored pigment into your mixture, it diminishes the value. And lead white being the low tinting pigment that it is, it's very easy to wind up with mixtures like this one that are a little bit too dark to be used to indicate the highest key values in your painting. It's mixtures like this on the palette especially when I have a totally open palette, meaning that I'm doing all of my mixing just with my brush, that I'm always quite conscious of in terms of needing to assess and reassess the brightness of the value. Another thing I'm keen to work on at this stage is to really try to solidify some of the transitional areas in the painting. What I mean by that is that there are a couple different ways to create transitions, and each one can be appropriate in different places. If you look here, there's a really noticeable transparency to the half tones as they go from lighter here to darker here, all the way into shadow here. Now, in a way, we can play a little bit with that sense of transparency and opacity, and it can create a very useful and interesting visual texture. That being said, in focal areas like this one, and in fact, these two as well, I find that I want to push a little bit more the opacity of the mixtures that are running across the form in those particular areas. So what I'll be doing in this phase of the painting is looking to kind of increase to a noticeable extent the actual quantity of the paint I use to make a transition like this one. And indeed, here and here as well. Now that we've come to the end of the painting, there's some really useful things that we can do in terms of just observing and assessing the work in front of us. And it's important to do that in a really balanced way, and it's something that I actually find students have a really hard time doing. Nine times out of ten, a student is going to be really intensely focused on what went wrong, what they were not able to do, rather than taking the more balanced view that some things went right and other things didn't go as well as they would have hoped. This, of course, takes a lot of practice, and we shouldn't take for granted that self-assessment is a skill. For me, looking at this painting, there's a couple things that I was really pleased about. One of which was the amount of form that I was able to derive from the highlights around the lower eyelid. You really get quite a clear sense of where those planes are shifting. And if I'm honest, I really feel the same thing about the upper eyelid as well. The values that I use to indicate these forms are really pretty clear and indicative of the planes that I understand to be there. So score one for the success category. Something I look back on and think that I shouldn't have done is to have changed so much the edges that I had in between these values in this section of the brow ridge. At one point, the values here and here were really well aligned with quite a hard edge in between them. In many cases, that can be a problem. In this situation, because I'd chosen those two values so well, I felt like the transition almost made itself for you. And so I was able to have a stronger, more rigid sense of form in a bony area without having to work for or manipulate the edge in between. Instead, I looked a little bit too intently upon the transition that was happening from top to bottom and decided I needed to brush across that edge a few times. The result doesn't render it a bad transition, but I personally just thought it was a little bit cooler before. So I'm gonna put that into the remember that for the next painting category. Another thing that I thought worked really well here was actually the light that was passing through the cornea. It was always going to be an aspect that needed a lot of sensitivity because of course this blue will stand out in the painting so much because all the areas around it are so warm and so orange. Had I left behind edges inside here that were a little bit too hard, a little bit too crisp, it probably would have made the focal area seem a little bit cartoonish. So I put that one into the success category as well. Now I won't go through everything that I think about the painting simply because I think that would make for tedious viewing. But suffice to say, these are some examples of things that I think you should be doing to your work. Finding what you appreciate about it in clear-cut, accountable ways 
and also the things that you think you could improve in the next painting. Assessments like these are fuel for a student. If you're fair to yourself and measured in the way that you make these assessments, they can prepare you really well for your next project. If they're not and you're unfair to yourself, they can deflate your ego a little bit too much and actually serve to discourage you from diving into your next painting. Now I know of course that everybody's different, but this is something that I have found consistently over the years with the students that I've worked with. I really hope you appreciated this tutorial and thank you so much for watching.